All right, so today we're gonna be building the Scout of Katana PCB edition. And now I say PCB edition because, well, it is a PCB, but it's actually the evolution of the original Scout of Katana, which was a hand wired board that I did probably about a year ago. Pretty neat little layout there, but we're gonna be adding some cool things to this board today, like an OLED. We're gonna add some RGB to it. It's gonna have an exposed controller. It's gonna be hot swap. It's gonna be pretty cool. Now, I will say, if you wanna pick one of these up, they will be available in limited quantities on my website down below. But before we actually jump into the build, I do wanna give a massive shout out to today's sponsor, which is Next PCB. Now, I've actually worked with them for quite a while now on and off on different projects. Specifically, the most notable one was the Scotto Wing probably about a year ago when I released that, which yet again is available on my shop if you want one of those. But they have really, really good high quality PCBs at pretty good prices but they have really, really, really good part sourcing, which is the big thing that I noticed on this build here. All I had to do was basically just tell them the specific parts I want. I didn't have to give them like parts numbers or anything. They kind of found it all for me. But what they did is they found that they actually built a copy of the PCB and then sent me an image of that physical PCB. So this made it really easy to kind of make sure that everything was right before it got manufactured. But then they do also have some other tools that make PCBs really easy to manufacture where they have their DFM analysis tool. Basically, you can kind of get another layer of air checking on top of what you use in like your PCB design program. And another one that doesn't seem very big, but it kind of is, is that they actually offer matte black solder paste. Now, most places don't offer that, so it's really nice that they do have that. But with that, their PCBs are really high quality. They have good prices. I'll link them down below. I recommend Check checking out. But with that, we're gonna jump in and get started. So this here is the Scotto Katana PCB edition, specifically the case and the PCB here. What I'm gonna do actually is grab our PCB out of here. I'll put this off. We'll talk about this once we like assemble it later. But this is the PCB that I got from Next PCB, and you can see that matte black here. Um, here's the Scotto wing with the non-matte black, which also looks really good. It's just kind of glossy, but I think the matte black, it, it matches the case really nicely. So I think it just works really well on this. So that's why I like the matte black. But this is the PCB, and as you can see, if we actually flip this over, it is pre-assembled from the factory. So we have our sockets on it. We have our diodes right in there as such. So they're pre-soldered. They're really tiny. They're a little bit hard to hand solder. So having that assembled from the factory is very nice. We have our little SK6812 mini E LEDs here, which are RGB. So they'll kind of shine through there, which we have a cool diffuser thing. We're gonna actually do with that in a second here. And then finally up top here, we have our little MCU spot, which you can see is kind of like this nice cutout. Now what we're gonna be using specifically there is an RP2040 zero it's a very small little controller here and what we have on the sides here are these pads called castellated pads meaning we could basically surface mount this so basically we have this here this will sit like that and what you can see so it's basically a module that sits on the board and then we have a really low profile usb-c port so we don't have to like do any of the circuitry on the board we can kind of use this as a module in the middle there which i think will look pretty cool and it works pretty nice now what you're probably wondering is how exactly do we actually solder this onto the board and well it seems a little bit complicated it really isn't that complicated really all we have to do is we're going to actually just grab this. I'm going to come over here and grab a piece of tape. This is specifically captain tape. It's basically heat tape. I'll link this down below if you want to pick this up because it's really good for soldering, but you can use really any tape. And basically just take this piece of tape. We'll put it onto the board like that. And then we have the holes on here, which will just simply align with the holes on the PCB. I'm going to do this better once I actually solder it for real because I can't really see at the angle I'm sitting at. I kind of need to like block the overhead camera to do this, but we'll basically take that and align it with the holes on there, tape it down, and then all you want to do to actually do this is I'll just grab my iron to kind of show you. You'll be able to put your iron in that little notch there, and then you can feed solder into the hole and it will kind of just flow. Now, I will recommend also on this is that on these pads here, I'm kind of just flux them. I have a little flux pen over here that I'll use to put flux on there. Just help it flow a little bit better. But other than that, I'm just going to go through. I'm going to solder this on, and that's really all there is to this build other than the little OLED right here, which is through hole. But we'll talk about that later because we kind of have like some cool stuff we have to do with that with like diffusers and stuff. I'm just going to go through. I'm going to solder on the controller of this. I'll be back after that. there's the controller mounted on there. As you can see, everything is soldered nicely. We do have a lot of flux here, which I am going to clean off in just a moment here. Basically, all you use that is some really high proof alcohol. So this is some 99% IPA. But what I want to mention before that, I'm just going to take this. I'm going to put a little bit of solder on the tip here just to get it kind of like that. And what I recommend is that you actually kind of reflow these a little bit after doing them. So you kind of see how you just come in there and just kind of re-wet it up and pull it off. The reason I recommend doing that is that it actually helps the pad connect a little bit better because you can't really see underneath it. So by doing that, it really kind of ensures it gets a good connection. But I'm gonna go through now. I'm gonna come in with a Q-tip with some isopropyl and then after we'll talk about the OLED section. So there is the flux all cleaned off the PCB there, and I will recommend doing it a few times. You probably saw on that little tile website. I did it a few times here. You can go as many or as few times as you want, but when you actually start dissolving the flux, it kind of spreads out all over the PCB, so you can maybe see it a little bit there. Yeah, it's a little messy, so I could have done it a few more times. Not gonna really matter so much because all this is obviously gonna be covered up, and this middle section is also gonna be covered up, so if I actually put this down, and grab this from the case kit, which uh, on my site I do sell this with the case. Basically, we have parts in here. So if I open this up, 
we have our little baggie of hardware, we have our little clear plate, and then we have this section here, which is for the OLED, and then specifically diffusers for these LEDs. So the diffuser for the LEDs is so the LEDs don't blind you because they are very, very bright here. And with this, it kind of just spreads it out and looks really nice on there. But this will basically mount on there, and then the OLED will kind of clip in, and then everything will mount to it. Now, the thing I do want to recommend here is that if you are going to build one of these, buy the OLED from my store. I'm not just saying that because it is my store, but the OLEDs on my store are actually matched to this build. And the reason for that is if I actually grab an OLED here, this is the OLED we're using as a 0.96, a pretty standard OLED. But a lot of the time on these, I've had issues with the mounting holes either being too wide or too short there. And that can cause an issue because if we look at our little clear plexiglass plate here, we basically have the mounting holes on there to kind of fit on it. Now, there are other ways that I have experimented with to kind of get this mounted to avoid this issue. But as of right now, I do recommend picking up the OLEDs from me because they are matched to this so that everything will work properly and as it should. Now, what I'm going to recommend with the OLED also here is that before we solder it on, they come with these little pre-soldered headers on here and they have these little black things on them what i'm going to actually do is i'm going to grab a plier here because we're not going to actually need those we're going to take this we're going to just kind of kind of grab them and then you can kind of it's a little bit hard to do this you want to be careful not to like stab yourself with this or break your screen so just kind of like pull those off eventually they will come off just like so yep there we go rip those off so you see how that kind of is. And then what this will do is we'll actually mount it onto here. So I'll mount it with the standoffs. I'll do this all on a time lapse, but basically we'll mount on there and you can take this whole module and mount it on the PCB. So I'm going to just go through and do that now. There really isn't much to explain here. Standoffs go on here. Uh, so we have these little six millimeter standoffs. Um, there are these washers actually. So I should kind of explain this is that there are these little washers in here. Uh, you can see these little red things. Those will sit on the PCB here. So the OLED will have the washers and then the standoff will go on there and you'll use a screw to kind of mount it. So I'm going to go through and mount everything on there and I'll be back after that. So there is the basic assembly. I didn't do the full thing here because I want to explain some stuff. Basically, we have these little six millimeter standoffs. We have this little washer here. And the reason for that washer is that sometimes these standoffs can get crooked. So by using the washer, it keeps them a lot straighter like that. So when we actually take our plate here, it will just be a little bit more aligned, more parallel with it. So it works good like that. And basically, this is just kind of go like that. We have underneath, we have our countersunk screws here. So the countersunks go underneath. And then we have a bunch of other hardware here to actually mount everything. So we have some longer ones here that we'll actually use to go through these holes on here. And then those will go into a little nut on the back of the PCB to kind of mount this whole assembly. So if I take this, it goes like that. You can see that those will kind of go through. We'll put the nut on the back there. And then all you have to do is solder these pins on. So this is basic just through hole soldering there. We just solder the OLED to the PCB. And that's what I'm gonna go through to do now. I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna solder it on, and that's basically the whole assembly. Then we can assemble the board and start typing on it. So I'm gonna go through, solder this stuff on, I'll be back after that. So there's the OLED assembly on the board there. I do have to clean the plexiglass, but I'll do that before I finish the build. But I didn't actually solder in that time lapse there because I wanted to actually talk about this. So on the back here, we obviously have the pins for the OLED right here. These standoffs for the case are only four millimeters tall. These are about five millimeters tall. So what we're gonna actually wanna do is we're gonna wanna grab a like clipper here. So we're gonna grab that. And we're just gonna cut them a little bit lower. So we're just gonna kind of cut like that before we solder them on. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna do that now, solder this to it, and then we'll talk about the stabilizer and then we can actually assemble it. So I'm gonna go through and solder on this OLED. I'll be back after that. So now the OLED is soldered on and that's all there is for soldering on this board. There's like 20 pads here and then four pads there. So not much soldering to it. It's pretty basic. I mean, this part can be a little intimidating, but I promise it really isn't that bad, but that's everything assembled. So the board is ready to go. I might flash the firmware and test this now. I, the firmware is ready. I just haven't flashed. So I'll check that later. But at this point, what I want to do is actually put this down and I'm going to grab this right here, which is a 7U Duroc V3. So what I'm going to do to this actually is I'm going to do a Band-Aid tape mod to this just so it sounds a little bit better, but it does need a little stabilizer there for the PCB. This will basically slot into there. So I'm gonna get that ready. And then afterwards we put our switches in, and we'll have a functioning board. So I'm gonna go through and mod the stabilizer. So there's the stabilizer on the PCB there. The tolerance between this is very, very close. I might actually mess with the design file for this to kind of pull it up a little bit there. But at this point, what we have to actually do is something very specific to like my PCB builds and how I do them. But this is very important you do it in this order is that we're gonna actually take the PCB here. We have five little holes on each half, which are specifically for the standoffs or four millimeter standoffs. So the case here will come with the little hardware bag here. And basically there's gonna be a longer and a shorter screw in there. Basically the countersunk one actually goes underneath. So the countersunk screw will go on the bottom of the PCB or the case here. And then the non countersunk, so the pan head. So like, uh, let me see if I can find one right there. 
um, one of those that will actually go to the PCB. So we're going to do, so we're going to actually go through and mount all the standoffs on all these holes here. So you can see there's five on each half. We'll do that first and then we can talk about the switches and actually assembling the board. So I'm just going to time lapse through putting the standoffs on here. So there are all the standoffs on the PCB here. And I want to reiterate yet again how important it is you do this before you assemble the switches onto here. It's not the biggest deal if you don't. You'll just have to kind of take it apart and put these on after the fact because basically how I do this is that I have my plate here. And I do have these holes in it which could kind of help to get into there to tighten them if you need to depending on what tool you have but you won't be able to get that screw through there just because it is a 3d printed plate but if you put this on beforehand you'll have basically no way to get those standoffs in there so you want to do this before not the end of the world if you don't just want to reiterate multiple times do that first because the number of times that i have built one of my boards and haven't done this and then had to take all the switches out and put them back on has been a lot so just kind of really pushing that here but at this point what we can do is actually grab our case here so we have our case you can see we have our little cut out here for the USB. The reason I make that bigger is if I actually grab a cable here, you can see that it has this fatter part on it on the USB-C. Uh, that just makes sure that you can basically fit any USB-C in there. But what we have is we have our PCB. This will just kind of slot in there like so. You'll see it perfectly aligns with the USB-C port. We'll be able to screw everything in there. But first, of course, is actually assembling the PCB. So we're gonna take this, or well, not assembling the PCB, but putting the switches on the PCB. We're gonna take our PCB, put it here. We're gonna grab our plate, and I like to do the texture side up. Um, you could technically do it either way with this board because it is symmetrical, but you can see that this will go like that. Our little things here will go perfectly through. What we're gonna do is put our switches on. And what I'm gonna use here are these Aco Palm Silver. I think that's what they are. They have like a really short actuation. They're really nice for gaming, actually. Maybe not so much for typing. They kind of bottom out hard. But also there is something specific to this build. Well, not this build like in particular if you're building your own, but my version of this board because of the keycaps I'm using, which we'll talk about shortly, is that this one is marked. So my center switch or my spacebar switch is marked because this actually has a box navy. So if I actually, there's a box navy switch here. I took the spring from that and put it in here because we need that for our spacebar in particular, which you probably saw in the thumbnail, um, the reason for that. But we're gonna be putting that in the middle. So we'll put that there. I'm gonna go through and pop all these switches in and I'll be back after we can talk about the keycaps because the keycaps are gonna kind of tie this entire build together. It's gonna look really cool. So I'm gonna pop the switches in. So there are the switches in the board and I did actually pop this off also off camera and cleaned it so it looked nice and I did take the little protective cover off the OLED so that's all ready to go there. I did also flash the firmware upstairs and test that everything works on there which we'll see in a moment what it does. But now what I'm gonna do is actually put this down we're gonna talk about what's gonna tie this entire build together now. So over here what I have actually are these here which you can see full metal keycap set. All keys did reach out and send these to me so I did get these for free. I will say right up front that they are very pricey because they are 18 karat gold plated. Um, yeah, uh, you can kind of see there. They look really, really cool. And this is why you see earlier, or why I talked about earlier, why I put that heavier space bar in, because if we actually grab it over in here, we have this 18 karat gold, kind of fingerprinty, but very nice looking metal space bar here that was too heavy for these switches by default. So I put the heavier spring in there and it kind of does its thing. So if I actually pop this on here really quick. Yeah, I, I don't know if you can really hear that. It does uh, sound very, very dense. I might do some more stuff to make this sound even denser. But I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna just pop the keycaps on. I'm gonna assemble them into the case and then that's the entire build really. So I'm gonna go through and pop the keycaps on. So there it is fully assembled with the keycaps on it. And as you can see, these are definitely fingerprint magnets. I think I did mention um, they are 18 karat gold plated. I don't think I mentioned the price I might have or not. They're about $450 for these. I know that the other sets from all keys, the uh, full metal ones are a little bit cheaper if they're not the gold ones, but these are the gold plated ones. So they are actual like 18 karat gold, which is kind of insane, but uh, I'm just gonna wipe these off really quick. They are fingerprint magnets like crazy. And you can kind of see my head right there on that one with how it's doing that. But also because they are metal, they're extremely, extremely heavy. So this entire board here is like very hefty right now. If I actually grab a scale here, I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna tear it out really quick. We're gonna put that on there. We're looking at about 16 ounces, so that's about a pound for this, or if you are in the actual good units of grams, 455 grams here. So it's it's a pretty hefty board, which is uh, kind of neat. Um, 
what I'm going to do is put this down now. And what I'd like to actually talk about is the Katana layout because I didn't really touch on this too much. Uh, basically what Katana is, it's obviously a staggered layout here, but it's like that. So it basically keeps your like owner deviation of your wrist a little bit wider. So it's like typing on a real split without it being split. Um, it kind of can get your wrist like wider basically is the way to look at it. It's a little bit weird at first, but once you start typing on it, it's actually not that bad. It's pretty easy to adjust to just like adjust it to say an ortho or a staggered layout. The only thing with this that's weird specifically to me right now is that um, I type Colmac and these keycaps are obviously QWERTY. Uh, so we have our F here and this here. I'm probably going to just move that J over here so that the homie bumps are in the correct spot. Luckily, they are on the same row. But um, that is the Colmac layout that I have on here. It's just in QWERTY right now. But you basically sit on it like this and you can just kind of type on it, which is pretty cool. And these do feel really good. These keycaps do feel really, really good on here. But what I'd also like to do now is I'm going to grab a USB cable. We're going to just plug it in yet again. That is bigger so it fits. We'll plug that in. And you'll see we have a bongo cat in the middle. We have our little RGB here doing things. Eventually, what I'm going to do on my key map is I'm going to actually make it so when I like activate caps lock, which I actually never really use caps lock. But when I do, in the very rare times I do, I'd like just to be like a certain color here. I also use the RGB to kind of do other things such as like layer indicators, things like that. Um, but for right now, it's just cycling through RGB. And then also, if I just pretend to type on this right now, you'll see that bongo cat does this thing. He does bongo cat things and uh, it tells you your words per minute up there, which I don't know how QMK like calculates the words per minute. It's never like actually accurate, but whatever, that is that. Of course, at this point, what we have to do now, because this would not be a keyboard build video without this, we have to do a typing test. These keycaps do feel really good. They sound, I mean, I don't know how much you can hear of that. They sound very good. They're kind of very dense, um, a little clacky maybe. Maybe, I don't know. With that, we're gonna go do a typing test and we'll see how this actually sounds. So yeah, I think it sounds pretty good. It looks really, really good here, as you can see, like with that there, I mean, look at the, the gold keycaps, the weight of it feels really nice. I'm really proud of this board. I think it's my best PCB yet, honestly. And I do have to give another big shout out to Next PCB for sponsoring this. I do have a bunch more projects coming out from them soon. Um, well, not from them, made by them, designed by me. Um, collaboration, you know, partnership there. But um, also, if you do like this board, if you do like how this is, I do have a limited amount of them available on my store. Um, if you want to support me and pick one up, link down below for that. But with that, looks really good. I'm really proud how it came out. Looks really, really nice with the OLED and the RGB and stuff in the middle. But I don't have much else to say here. Join my Discord if you want. I've been plugging that a lot more. That's down below. And also, comment, rate, subscribe as per usual. And I'll see you guys next time.